invoices that I'm receiving, then I can check them off this way and create a deposit for it. However, I just have one that I'm going to receive here. So I'm going to be checking this one off and I'm going to say there's uh, Anderson and let's go ahead and uh, deposit that. So this gives us our new batch deposit. Now we only have one item in the batch, but you could have multiple items that, that you were depositing this way. And if you had multiple invoices that you were grouping together, for example, to deposit into the checking account at one time, as we talked about with this issue with the undeposited funds, you could batch them this way as well. But you might have other things that you're grouping with it too. Like you might be uh, grouping other sales with it as well that weren't just invoices like sales receipts. So I'll put it through the clearing account in any case. So we're going to say the date is going to be January 18th, 2023 for the practice problem. It's a deposit and we're putting it into not the checking account, but rather the clearing account that we set up in this practice problem. So that's going to be increasing the clearing account here because that's going to be a deposit. The other side is going to decrease the accounts receivable. Not only that, but it's also going to be decreasing the sub ledger for accounts receivable for the customer Anderson Guitars. So let's make the deposit and check it out. So we'll make the deposit and then go on over to the balance sheet, update the balance sheet so it's up to date. And then we're going to go down and say, let's check out, there's the clearing account. Clearing account looks good. And then the accounts receivable, let's go into the accounts receivable here and check it out. We're going to say, all right, we had the decrease. So there's the receipt payment form decrease to the accounts receivable. That's good. Going back, I'm going to open up another form. Notice there's no impact on the income statement right now because there was an impact when we made the sale, but the sub ledger for accounts receivable will be impacted. So if I right click and duplicate a tab just to look at another report for the sub ledger of accounts receivable, I'm going to go to the reports on the left hand side. You can also hit the drop down for the reports. Let's type, let's just search it down here. We want the receivable. Let's look at the aged receivable summary. Aged receivable summary, like a fine wine. It has been aged well. So now we've got uh, the, all we really want to look is the total here. So we got it broken out by total and we have it broken out by customer 23, 7, 21, 50. That ties out to what's on the balance sheet, or it should, 23-7-21-50, but we would probably be tracking it internally in the first tab now. We could go to the accounting dropdown if we go back into, or let's go into the business dropdown, and let's go into our invoices. And now that invoice up top is no longer awaiting payment, right? So the invoice is no longer awaiting payment. If I go into the paid area there's our paid invoice so that's one way we can track it we can also go to the contact drop down and go to our customers perhaps and we would like to see anderson guitars going into anderson guitars and we can see our detail in here so uh, invoice approved and invoice paid all right let's do another one so i'm going to go back up top and hit the business drop down and we're going to go into the invoices and so oh by the way the others oh no i'm let's go do another one so jones guitars let's go into awaiting payment over here don't get ahead of yourself we're going to go into the jones guitar so we'll add this one so i'm going to select that one and again if i had those two at the same time that i think the payment's going to be grouped together when it goes into my uh my bank account then maybe i, I well i could i could so i could have selected both of those items together and had a grouped deposit that goes into my checking account. And that's one method that we could use to solve kind of that grouping problem, which is probably all you would really need as to a method and therefore wouldn't need basically the clearing account that we're, that we're setting up because it's likely that you would get a lot of, you would be processing all of your received payments through an invoice if that's your normal cycle. However, you can imagine situations where you got paid, say, cash from the invoices and then pays possibly you got paid cash from a cash register receive payment type of stuff. And in that situation, you would still need like a clearing account. So we're still going to kind of imagine a clearing account situation just to get the concept of the clearing account. All right. So we're going to be putting this in here. We're going to make the deposit 
and do this again. So we're gonna say this happened on uh, on Jan January. I can hit the drop down this way. January 18th again. Let's do that. And 2023. I'm just gonna say deposit. And we're gonna say this is gonna go into the clearing account again for Jones Guitars. Looks good. I'm not gonna have a reference number. What's this gonna do? Increase the clearing account. And the other side is because it's a batch deposit and we made the clearing account a cash type of account. The other side, uh, decreasing the accounts receivable because we're paying off an invoice and we can connect to the invoice, by the way, if we clicked on it here, just to check if we wanted to do that. And it's gonna decrease the sub ledger, breaking accounts receivable out by customer, in this case, Jones Guitar being the customer. Let's do it, let's deposit it. And then hit that big blue button. The green pops up because it's good to go. Balance sheet, update the report. We want up to date stats here, stat. So we've got our clearing account it has the two items within the clearing account now. So if I'm gonna deposit them together, again, if they were both invoices, I could have deposited them into the checking account as one lump sum by selecting both of those invoices and making the one deposit. I might have wanted to do that if for whatever reason due to credit cards or whatever the payment processing form I'm using is, that it was gonna hit the bank account in one lump sum uh, at that 9599, so I can do the bank rec. If they're gonna be hitting the bank account with two separate transactions and like this, then I would like to see it in my system that way. So once again, I can tie out to the bank accounts. And so, so again, the, the check, the clearing account's a little bit redundant in this system, but again, you can imagine that I'm also, you could have a situation where you're gonna get, when you're gonna also get receive payment forms, uh, money in forms like that were cash that you're gonna deposit together along with these items that are in the clearing account. And therefore, again, you might have a grouping problem when you deposit it into the checking account. So we'll just check that out conceptually. The other side, accounts receivable, 19,122.50. If I go to my uh, aging account and update it, then uh, we're, we're now at the 19,22.50. So that should now tie out to what's on the balance sheet. If I go to the first tab then and look at this internally, business dropdown, look at my invoices, then we can see that uh, we have the awaiting payment invoices have now decreased or there's one less of them. The paid invoices are now here. We've got the two in the paid invoices. If I hit my contacts drop down and look at my contacts, I can go to Jones Guitars and go into to that. They still owe us some money, but uh, they paid off this invoice. So invoice paid. If I go into that invoice, by the way, you could see the detail uh, of uh, of the invoice. So there we have it, amount due, uh, no amount due. So less payment, I can click on the payment and link on over to the payment. So here's the transaction, batch transaction. Very, very nice. All right, let's do one more. I'm gonna hit the drop down on the business again, invoices, and let's do uh, Smith here. Uh, so let's go to awaiting payment, awaiting payment. And we're going to pick up this one this time. That's the one and then deposit it. Boom. We got a payment for that one. And the date I'm going to say is again, January, uh, 18th. Let's say reference deposit bank account is going to go into the clearing account. And we're going to say that this will be, there's the invoice for the 8,000. This will increase the checking account, the clearing account. This will decrease the accounts receivable. And it'll also decrease Smith Guitars, the customer sub ledger for accounts receivables. Let's deposit it and do it again. We've seen this before. Let's update it. So now we have in the clearing account, 17,599 again. If I would expect that all 17,599 was to hit the checking account in one.